North Carolina head coach Roy Williams has decided he is going to retire. He's out. He said, finito, I'm done. He leaves with a 903 and 264 record. That is 77.4% winning percentage. Look, he spent 10 years as an assistant at North Carolina under Dean Smith. He spent 15 years as a head coach at Kansas, and then just spent the last, what, 18, 19 years, 18 years as the head coach at North Carolina. It makes perfect sense. Over the past however many years, I'm not surprised, and, and none of you should be either. Uh, the only surprise, I guess, is that he announced it on April 1st, and it wasn't a joke. But he is getting up there in age. He's in his 70s at this point. He's been hurting for years. He's finally getting back to where he can move around more, right? But he's been telling Gary Parrish and uh, Jeff Goodman and uh, all these uh, really respected, uh, well-connected college basketball writers for years after he had surgery, after he had all those things go wrong medically, that his health has not been good. He even told Gary Parrish at one point, if you listen to the Ion College Basketball podcast, that he could not even stand up at practice anymore a few years ago. Now, he has gotten back to where he's been doing better. Luckily, he's he's up moving around. He's in better shape than he has been in years and years. Uh, his health is significantly improving but with the way that college basketball is changing, if you have been coaching this game for 40-some-odd years, why would you want to stick around and, and deal with a complete systematic change of the sport that you know so well? I don't blame him for getting out of here. Other people will have to adapt. He doesn't. I mean, he, he's old enough at this point. He's made enough money. He can ride off into the sunset and enjoy the last 20, 30, who knows, 40 years of his life. Why go through the hassle of it with all the transfers and the new NIL stuff and the way that the sport is changing? College athletics is completely different at this point than it was even five years ago. So I don't blame anybody for wanting to get out at this point. So Roy Williams, cheers to that. The question for North Carolina is, who's next? So, and I've had people text me already today and, and say they got to go out and go after Jay Wright and they got to go after Nate Oates and they got to go. That's not how North Carolina has done things, right? It's always been in the family with them. Now, should they go after the best possible coach? Absolutely. I do not disagree with that. Do I think they will? Probably not. Wes Miller played at North Carolina, he is the head coach at UNC Greensboro. They have done really, really well. He won a SOCON uh, tournament this year. SOCON conference tournament this year. Let me say it correctly. But he's a really, really good coach. That would not be a bad option. The other option, former ESPN uh, college basketball analyst. I was going to say talking head, but it's the same thing. Hubert Davis has been on the staff with Roy since 2012. I think he probably has a pretty good shot at it. And for those that ask, well, if you are just going to move it down the line and give it to Hubert, why would you not just go ahead and announce that? Well, part of that is, now that Roy is actually retiring himself, why not give Roy that day? And then you can give Hubert his day, because he has not been a head coach. So, you do Roy today, everybody celebrates him over the Final Four, whatever. Next week, you announce Hubert Davis. And then he has his day, and everybody gets to celebrate him as opposed to celebrating Roy. I think it's really smart and a good way to do it if that is, in fact, the direction that they go. Who knows what they end up doing? I mean, do do you try and call Tony Bennett? Do you try and call uh, Chris Beard, who just took the Texas job, who we'll talk about here in a minute? Uh, There's a lot of different really good candidates that would be great for this job. And this is, in my estimation, the best college basketball job out there. So there, any candidate that they wanted to talk to will actually sit down and have a conversation with them. John Calipari might sit down and have a conversation. I don't think that's the way that they want to go, and I don't think that's where Calipari wants to go, but you never know. So I think anybody that they call would listen, but for them it's got to be the right fit, and I don't know that I blame them for sticking in-house. It's worked for years. It didn't work with Bill Guthrie. It didn't work for Matt Doherty, but... It certainly worked with Dean Smith, and it certainly worked with uh, Roy Williams. I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. 
Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.